And like I said, that is not the normal boot kernel. I mean, the normal boot screen. Uh, all these, it's just half of, you know, it's the left side of a square bracket. Uh, like, per, like a, can't think of any other words. But anyway, that is what they call it, the square bracket. And, but there's no right side on there, which is curious. But uh, it just says, Seagate, okay. Surely it's not trying to boot to that. That's possible, isn't it? No, because I saw Fedora. Yeah, never mind. It's it's not it's booting to my hard drive or my right array. I've got eight drives in it, but six of them are set up in an array, and that's what I'm running on. Uh, the other two, I hadn't done anything with them yet. I was. I was originally thinking I would buy two big uh, SATA drives and put them in, in those last two slots. And I wanted those other two as backups in case I had a failure. But they're in there still. Uh, and I haven't, there's no, you know, there's no array set up on them or anything. Anyway. <sighs> I left them in there because I don't have any blanks to, to put in the... Uh, in those slots, if I take them out, then it, you know you don't want the airflow to be messed up. So, <clears throat> so they're sitting there; they're on all the time, but they're not being used. So they could just as easily go bad as any of the rest of them. <laughs> Good idea, huh? Anyway, uh, it's just a readout of all the hardware, and maybe there's some, you know. I mean, I can't, I'm not good at looking through long lists anyway and finding things, so my eyes just aren't good at that at all. Uh, and this is really small, so there's no no way I'd, there, I could miss an error. But usually there should be an error down at the bottom where it stops. Not always, but uh, it just stops at the keyboards, at the HP, and it just stops. Says everything connected, device connected. Okay, I'm gonna run around the corner and open my window and get some fresh air in here. Just being up running around is gonna warm me up. Yeah, that air is rather cool. <clears throat> Opened it enough to get me some fresh air in here. <clears throat> All right, so. Uh, well, I have to hard shut it down to get it to come back on again. I really, that's not, usually not a problem when there's something wrong, but it can cause the, the uh, data to get corrupted and then have to be fixed. I don't like doing that, but I'll do it again. I'm going to hold it until it shuts down. Yeah, all the hard drives are blinking green. Okay, now, now this time I am going to select the older kernel. It's, I figure it'll just boot back up. If not, then that'll tell us something. <laughs> In a regular machine, you need to be ready, but it's not going to be. It'll be a while. And normally, like well, usually, I let it run for several months here in the winter. Uh, I didn't, you know, I was always cold at night. Uh, this room, well, it still gets hot um, because uh, uh, the heater, because of the heater. Too hot. For, uh, well, like I said, 78.4 degrees, that's what it is in here. It doesn't feel bad because I open the window and I'm getting fresh air pouring in right now. And with that vent, that's cool because with the vent in the closet, it pulls the hot air out the roof, you know. So uh, it's completely changed in here, what it's like in here. Uh, let's get that finger on those error keys so you don't miss this. <clears throat> yeah, I wasn't really uh, feeling fantastic and wasn't even thinking about making a video today or anything. But 
1920 by 1080, 60 hertz, and then it will change after it goes through the boot screen, HP Pro Light boot screen, it will change to uh, <clears throat> the 38, 34, or whatever it is. HP profile mode, balance, power, and performance. And power regulator mode, dynamic power saving. That's what I decided what works. This makes it the quietest and still runs good. The main thing is how loud it'll get if you put it on anything else, though. <clears throat> Pretty much anything I remember putting it on. And uh, <clears throat> initializing the P41, P410i. RAID controller. These are actually, well, they are uh, on a PCI slot, but it's a separate slot that'll only take that thing. Uh, so they're not actually, you know, they're not built into the motherboard, but they are uh, HP's specific, you know, RAID controller. You could put a regular RAID controller in the in the PCI slot, but I don't have any reason to do that anyway. Okay, come on. Oh crap! Glad I had. Oh come on. It wouldn't let me. Neither one of the keyboards would do it. It would. They didn't work. Shoot. Now what are you supposed to do? <clears throat> Maybe I should. Uh, I guess I'll turn off this other keyboard. Let's see. One of them might need to be... Well, actually, I can switch off of this one to get rid of it. Where is it? Yeah, it's in the same place it always in. Okay, now see it? It sees input this time. Just like the very first time when I started making the video. It just says... Uh, He's talking about host name and stuff, not nothing about the uh, reboot or anything. So, actually, yeah, I can just switch this to a different machine and no longer, now nothing happens. Okay, now let's try this one. The reason I'm doing that is because this seemed to be the one that, that was getting a readout that was talking to it. I've never, well, I have seen a keyboard, you know, USB keyboard do that, but not both of them. Now, I could, I was trying to, I just hit the down arrow key to try to get to a different kernel. Wouldn't work on either keyboard. Nothing, it was not responding. Then, of course, it timed out and went on. It was, the keyboards weren't activated. I guess I might ought to unplug this. I'll unplug the wireless, I guess. Usually it's the wires that are most dependable, you know. Unless there's something crazy going on with my uh, USB uh, KVM switch. But it seemed to be working fine. I saw, you know, when I switched off of it a while ago and then switched back. It does say, yeah. Sig term, yeah, sending sig term to remaining processes. This is already up there, I just wasn't paying attention. Reading it uh, from POD1 system, okay. I think it might actually be going to shut down. Oh, it's waiting for 336 or something. Some DU dev. 336, 447, 451. Those are, I remember those from a while ago. Waiting for process system you do. <sighs> I got a feeling I got a bad a bug in the kernel update though.
Because this is not anything like what you would see if you had uh, file system errors. You would see something about file system errors. <coughs> So, yeah, I don't. I think I've had this come something like this come up before, but I didn't. I usually, I guess, I just hard shut down <clears throat> and then turn the machine back on. It was fixed, so I didn't pay much attention. <coughs> <coughs> okay, it's going on and doing something. Let's see. Oh, it remounted. The file system, read only again, all swaps deactivated, all loop devices detached, new devices. It says rebooting now. <clears throat> I might have to do the whole, the, um, <clears throat> the only other thing that really, you know, I know to do. Unplugging everything that's <coughs> absolute necessary, like one keyboard, one mouse, <coughs> and uh, I guess I can do one thing at a time to narrow it down. You know, I was thinking to do it all. But <coughs> USB drive is almost impossible to get to with it up in the closet the way it is. Uh, I have to turn that thing around sideways. I can unplug it, but I can't plug it back in. That's the thing. I can reach in there. Well, no, I think I do have to turn it really far sideways to be able to reach it. Because there's only, there's not enough room for my head to fit in there to reach back up in there. So, my arm just won't reach it, you know. And, uh, <clears throat> but that is, uh, if I needed, to, you know, I wanted to stay plugged in all the time. And, uh, so there's two on the front, two on the back USBs. So one of them is the eight terabyte drive, and the other one is the long cable going to my now into my hub, like I was talking about a while ago. My USB hub in here, and where I can reach it without getting out of my chair. And everything has been working great for quite a while now, months. So, but sometimes you know you think it's. Like, you think it's the, the update you just did, and instead it's actually, well, it could be kind of a combination, like it doesn't, some reason it doesn't see some of your extraneous devices, you know, your peripherals uh, correctly, and they're hanging it up. But a lot of times, you know, especially with USB, you can unplug them and plug them back in. Uh, it's very seldom that anything like that happens. Oh, and uh, all I, my memories of that is always with Windows XP and Windows 98. And I quit running. I didn't go to. I mean, I've I've ran Seven and stuff, but I ran Vista for a little while to see what it was like because everybody hated it so much. But uh, I, I don't have. But I don't have. I don't know if that's coming in the mic, but the neighbor just turned on oh, a vacuum, I guess. Uh, well, that's driving me crazy. It's got a high pitch whine to it, and it might be messing up my video to shut that window again. One reason why I hardly ever open the windows. Because you never know what the people are going to be doing out there. Okay. I was hoping to see it go ahead and uh, restart. It just went back to... <laughs> Logitech device connected, but it still isn't rebooted yet. I'm going to switch my keyboard back to where it belongs. I don't think that helped matters any. And uh, I made it read out. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's turn it off first. I don't think it's got anything to do with it, but you don't know. And that is something I can easily do. Turn off the wireless. Unplug it. 
And then now all I've got is my regular keyboard. <clears throat> I'm going to see if I can hit control alt delete and get it to do anything. It doesn't respond to it. It sees it, but it doesn't seem to respond to it. The last thing it has on there, it saw that I disconnected the uh, Logitech wireless keyboard. <coughs> and it actually is the one that works good. I guess I should... I just, the other ones weren't alive. And normally, that's the one that works when nothing else, you know, when the wireless might not work, you know. But Okay, I'm going to try it this way. See if my, going to have to hard shut it down again. This is getting ridiculous. Lights flashed when I, like in the background, I don't know what it was. Make sure there's no errors coming up on the front of the machine. <clears throat> Everything's green. I could unplug the, uh, have a USB sound card plugged into the front. I don't remember. See no, I did see it. At the beginning, I saw it saying so something about seeing that and everything seemed fine. All this stuff has been used. <clears throat> of course, there's always the possibility that something... Well, now, that thing does kind of disconnect sometimes. You have to, and it won't reconnect till you reboot. <clears throat> it has done that. That'd be the first thing I would think would act up. But uh, I wouldn't... I've never seen it hang up the boot, though, that I know of. I've had a few boot hang-ups in the last few months, and I just, you know, wasn't at a kernel update that I, I knew of anyway. Uh, well, I manually, yeah, there was. It wasn't because I manually update. That's what I've been doing. But, uh, yep, pretty blue screen. Takes a while. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Get ready. <clears throat> One thing is you don't have to be super fast. You just got to be there. But it takes long enough for you to kind of forget and go off, want to go off and do other things. <laughs> me. It does me. <laughs> okay. I guess they're blowing the leaves or something because I thought it was a vacuum at first. but <clears throat> I'm not sure with this um, lapel mic plugging it straight to the camera. It might be. I don't have a noise gate and a compressor and all that. You know, normally I do. <clears throat> Got to where I just plug. I can. It's actually working pretty good, other than the delay. I can plug. I can plug this USB, the um, Bluetooth adapter into my camera or into my mixing board, and it does a good quality sound and it's dependable. It doesn't quit on me or anything. Getting ready. But yeah, that uh, <clears throat> that uh, RAID controller <clears throat> it needs attention. Nope. Come on, not a single key on this thing responds, and the mouse doesn't work. That's not normal. I have done that. I have um, went into the... Uh, <clears throat> now, let's just see if this makes any difference. What if it just boots up, though? It's no, well, it's not booting up. Obviously, when you see this screen, you got some kind of problem. And I don't know what it is. Hardware problem, evidently. Okay, let me get up there and kind of read through that again. I must be missing something. <clears throat> Sometimes, uh, when you do have, and when you do have a problem, when there's a problem with, you know, we had a kernel update or. Uh, 
Uh, a lot of times it will just stop somewhere in the boot and it doesn't give you any clue. Always has been that way with Linux. I started in 2005 and I used to use proprietary video drivers and I would, once in a while it, they would, uh, the kernel would update and there wasn't an update for the video driver so you would, well you'd just get a black screen. You wouldn't get anything. But anyway, uh, no, no, you'd get something. Not like this, but you would get you would have it would stop during the normal boot screen, and I've learned where if it stops at that particular point, which had nothing to do with video, <laughs> the last thing on there, uh, <clears throat> you know that's what it is. Anyway, Seagate expansion desk. It says D E S C instead of D I S C. Isn't that weird? Eighty nine eleven P Q. Tech SCSI, SD4 type, I guess it sees it as a SCSI. SDD, so and so, so and so, so and so. Oh, I thought it said zero to zero, but it says eight terabyte. Okay. SDD, physical blocks. Now this, 0.28 terabyte, what is that? I just noticed that, <clears throat> oh, that's the rest of, oh, by, oh, I guess it has a point twenty eight terabyte partition on it, well, it, I, well, it shouldn't, anyway, <clears throat> it, it says ATB forward slash 7 dot 28 terabyte, oh, oh, okay, that's what you're really getting, 7 dot 28 terabyte, okay, next, SD, 1.0000, zero 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 zero. It's got colons in between them. And four eight nine six byte physical blocks. Right protect is off. It's right cache enabled. Doesn't support DPO or FUA. Transfer size bytes. Optimal transfer size. <clears throat> Display core initialize with so and so exclamation point. It's got numbers. U U D and U or U V D I think and U V D and C initialize success successfully. I speed USB device, HCPCI, I think that's my little hub I was talking about, 3.0 hub. It says it successfully initialized. Random first init done. Frame buffer, FB, mappable at DRM, VRAM. DRM size, DRM depth, pitch, FBCOM, can't even read those letters into a word, primary device, USB device, it's USB 2. USB hub found that probably the one on the keyboard. Well, it could be that. No, this. Since it's in that where it says USB 2, I think it's the one on the keyboard. Console switching. Am I, yeah. <clears throat> I heard, the word switch made me think to check if I am on the right keyboard. Hub found. Console switching. Backo, B A C O, all in caps, runtime PM. I don't know what that is. Okay, I'm reading every line this time to 